I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And we've got some good things for you this week, some very strange things, because Sunday, this past Sunday, was April 1st, and there's been many weird April 1st, April Fool's kinds of things going on. Very strange. Anyway, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon and all the great shows that are on the Tech Podcast Network. You need to go check them out at techpodcast.com. You will not regret it. Very good stuff there. Okay, I've got the old tablet here to keep me straight. <laughs> Something has to. Anyway, <laughs> um, man... It got all, stop that. It got all wonky, and it's trying to get wonkier again. Stop. <laughs> the screen just kept going up and down, up and down with my finger. It, never mind. Anyway, first item, an open source tricorder. How cool is that? Yes. Now, you know, as you know, I'm a big fan of Star Trek. Yes. All forms and manners of Star Trekiness. Yes. Now... And they had tricorders that they would flip open and, and scan things and so forth. Well, there have been a whole lot of folks, and I've been kind of chronicling them here in the blog. Folks have been kind of trying to come up with tricorders. Well, this guy came up with a tricorder concept uh, that he has released to open source so that people can create more things for it. Now, uh, it says here the open source Science tricorders I developed are very much a way to help people explore and feed their curiosity for the world. Peter Jansen, who created and built the gadget, told me in an email. This is, of course, talking to the person who wrote this article. Jansen recently earned his PhD in cognitive science from McMaster University in Ontario, Canada, where he taught computers to learn language like babies do. Yes, he is currently at the University of Arizona working on high-tech sensors. A person with that level of smarts apparently has enough brain power left over in his spare time to invent tricorders. Not to mention the greedlessness to share the blueprint with DIYers who want their own. Instructions are available from his tricorder project website. Dude, thumbs up to a guy who invents open source tricorders. Wouldn't it be cool if in the 23rd century when Kirk was around, that McCoy's tricorder was really an open source gadget. Ha <laughs> ha! The triumph of open source over the evil empire of Microsoft. Yes, I love it. Anyway, next item, VirtualBox 4.1.1.2. No, 4.1.1. 4.1.12 is released. Numbers, they just do weird things to my brain. Anyway, Oracle Today, that is on April 2nd, released VirtualBox. Boy, if they had released it on April 1st, that would have been bad. Anyway, VirtualBox 4.1.12, a maintenance release of VirtualBox 4.1, which improves stability and fixes regressions. I, I like the term regression. <laughs> particularly with regard to a hypervisor. What? Anyway, VirtualBox is a powerful x86 and AMD64 Intel 64 virtualization product for enterprise as well as home use. Not only is VirtualBox an extremely feature-rich, high-performance product for enterprise customers, it's also the only professional solution that is freely available as open source software under the terms of the new GNU. General Public License, GPL version 2. See about VirtualBox for an introduction on their website. Here's the thing I like about VirtualBox. As you may know, I run Ubuntu on my work netbook, notebook, laptop.
laptop, <laughs> whatever it is. A netbook is the little bitty guy. The larger one is a notebook or a laptop, which is what this is. <sighs> anyway, point is I run Ubuntu there and sometimes I need to run a Windows program on Windows. Okay, and so what I have been doing is accessing my view session at work through VMware View. But I went ahead and installed VirtualBox on Ubuntu, and since it's free, and then I installed a Windows session, you might say, or virtual machine under that that I can run on my laptop. And it works great. So neat solution there and it's totally free that is the VirtualBox part obviously Microsoft they don't give you anything for free but anyway <laughs> presently VirtualBox runs on Windows Linux Macintosh and Solaris hosts and supports a large number of guest operating systems including but not limited to Windows NT4 2000 XP Server 2003 Vista Windows 7 DOS Windows 3X like you'd want to run Windows 3X. Anyway, Linux 2.4 and 2.6, Solaris and Open Solaris, OS2 and OpenBSD. Yes, many operating systems. You get the picture. But the idea is this new release is much, uh, you know, it's much more stable. Yes. And I have also found, this is something else just as an aside. You know I like to do asides. I digress. Um... My laptop has three gig of memory, okay? It's running 32-bit Ubuntu, all right? Because I don't have a 64-bit chipset in the laptop, so it has to be 32-bit. So I'm running the 32-bit Ubuntu. Now, I only have the three gig. When I'm running the virtual session, obviously that's a restriction on the amount of memory I can give the virtual session you see. Now, on top of all of that, I was running the Unity interface, full-blown Unity interface with GNOME and all the eye candy and everything else, and it wasn't performing too well when I went into my VirtualBox session. So I dropped back to LXDE. Is that right? I talked about it last week, and I got the, the letters out of sequence. So... And I don't see it here handy where I can compare. But at any rate, the point is, is I used a much lighter, you know what I mean by lighter? See, there it goes again. It's just scrolling all over the place. Quit doing that. Tablet, stop. Stop. Right there. It didn't. It went somewhere else. <laughs> it's defying me. How crazy is that? It went... To Okay, now it's just getting annoying. <laughs> it went to Google. <laughs> what is this? Google has taken over my tablet. It's it's a takeover of Google. No, anyway. I don't know what's going on. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. All right. <laughs> All these references. Everybody will be competing with, did you get his reference this week? Yes, that was from Bill and Ted. You know that. Anyway, what was I talking about before my tablet went wonky? Um, uh, hmm. Oh, yes, memory. And using an interface that wasn't as power hungry. So by doing that, wow, I was able to then run the Windows session under VirtualBox much better in terms of speed and response and things. Plus the new interface, uh, not, not VirtualBox, but LXDE or whatever, has a cute little thing in the tray that shows you CPU usage. It's very nice. I like it. Anyway, I'm really all over the place today. All right, next item. Actually, Tell you what, before we go to the next item, let me tell you about a great sponsor we have in Citrix Systems. Citrix Systems has Go To My PC, which is good, but they're not being advertised this week. Go To Meeting. I did that last time. I started talking about Go To My PC, and then I started talking about Go To Meeting, and I was very confused. Don't do that. <laughs> 
Anyway, go to meeting. You can collaborate with folks with GoToMeeting. See, all the Citrix products are awesome, okay? And so I get confused sometimes and talk about all their other awesome products. They have some great stuff. But the bottom line is, go to meeting with HD Faces is what you need to have a meeting across the interwebs. And you can get a 30-day free trial by going to this special bit.ly URL right here, Universal Resource Locator, bit.ly. Use that and it will give you access to a 30-day free trial for GoToMeeting with HD Faces. You can get the full 16 by 9 aspect ratio uh, with your conferences and you can collaborate and perhaps come up with a way to build an open source tricorder. Well, that's already been done, but you can do other things. Cool stuff. All right, next item, new site name. Okay, here's the thing. Way back in the early days of Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, the blog was at drbillbailey.net slash blog, which was hard to remember. So, I decided to register thecomputercurmudgeon.com. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, that was a bright move. So, that was used for a while on the netcast and then I said you know that's too hard to remember and I kept having to spell curmudgeon c-u-r-m-u-d g-e-o-n curmudgeon I even came up with ways to say things like think of a dog wallowing in the mud lit up by a neon sign curmudgeon you know it was a lose, losing battle lost cause whatever I'm trying to say so I registered drbill.cc with CC being computer curmudgeon. Da -da! And you said, okay, got it. Well, the actual netcast for a long, long time has been drbill.tv. And that's easy to remember. You got Dr. Bill, you got TV. What else is there to remember? So, drbill.tv has been a website where just the videos are posted. Well, that's kind of silly. I now have them all on the blog anyway, so why keep up two websites? That doesn't make sense. So I combine them all together into one big amalgam <laughs> of gooiness. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, drbill.tv is your single source for goodness for the show. So, anyway, now of course all of those old URLs still work. drbill.cc still works. thecomputercurmudgeon.com still works. computercurmudgeon.com still works. Uh, even drbillbailey.net slash blog will redirect you to drbill.tv. But ultimately, <laughs> you will arrive at drbill.tv. Okay? So, <laughs> you're probably going... So, who cares? I care! I'm passionate about these things. So, plus it just makes it easier for folks to find me out there on the interwebs. So there you go. Okay, next item. Ah, strange show. My, my devices are fussing at me and I, at least the angry birds are back there for me. Okay. One fifth of all Americans have read an ebook. Dude. I say here in this, I am, and I spelled am with two A's. How cool is that? I am. I will fix that. <laughs> My finger must have jumped when I was typing. Anyway, I am just glad that one fifth of all Americans have read any book. But still, that is impressive when you think about it. I read my Star Trek books on my Kindles, plural, all the time. So I probably skew the curve, but we are definitely reading more virtual books. Yes. So there is a study that has been done that shows that one-fifth of American adults, 21%, report they have read an ebook in the past year. Now. That means, I hope, that not just that they picked up an ebook reader, read some text, and went, ooh, I've read an ebook. 
No. Hopefully it means they've read a whole book on a Kindle or a Nook or a Sony e-reader or across the web or something using Amazon's cloud reader or whatever. Okay? However you're doing it, keep reading. It's good for the brain. <laughs> yes, you can tell. Anyway, good stuff. I'm glad people are reading ebooks. I'm all for the ebooks. Now, this requires a bit of explanation. I mentioned earlier that there are uh, April Fool's jokes all about the web this year. And I actually got slightly taken in by one, just a little. It was the Google Tap program. LL Cool J did it, and they identified him not as LL Cool J, but this some other guy, Todd Smith, okay, which turns out is his real name. And so, who knew? And so he's talking about Google Tap. Well, I completely blanked over the whole Google Tap thing, and I was too busy looking at him going, that's got to be LL Cool J. It looks like LL Cool J. It sounds like LL Cool J. I watch him on NCIS Los Angeles, and by George, that is LL Cool J. You know, so I was so preoccupied with that, I didn't even listen to what he was talking about. So, I started showing it to my wife and, and the Game Master, and I'm like, look at this, this guy is LL Cool J. And they're like, yeah, it is. What's he talking about? And I'm like, I don't know. And come to find out it was an April 1st thing. It was like a April Fool's gag from Google. He was talking about using Morse code to tap out stuff. And it was going to be a revolution in IM. And I thought, oh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> so they got me. I'll admit it. But anyway... So they had all these other things. They had like 8-bit graphics for the Nintendo for Google Maps. I mean, they had all kinds of strange April Fool's things. You ought to go check them out. Go watch them on the old YouTube. You'll be amazed. But at any rate, I would show you here on the show, but Leo showed one of them and had one of his videos taken down by YouTube. Now, think about that. Google owns YouTube. Leo shows a Google April Fool's video and gets a show taken down for copyright infringement on a showing it on YouTube their own program. What? So, since they're obviously out of their minds, I'm not going to show it on my show. I'm just going to tell you, go to YouTube, look it up, Watch it there. Okay. Anyway, so shortly after that, Wednesday as a matter of fact of this past week, Google came out with a video here of Project Glass, which is, as it turns out, is not a... Um... There we go. Hear the music? Cool music. Anyway, um, so this video shows how Google Glass will work. And it's a concept. And it shows how they can like look up at the sky and it'll give them the weather. Meet me in front of Strand Books. I'm gonna turn that off because they start talking now. Anyway, <laughs> so he talks to his friends, he um checks for how to get around in a store directions within the store, all kinds of stuff. And it's very cool. Well, you know, you might think that was an April Fool's thing. It's not. It's a real product that they're actually working on. But people got to saying, well, you know, what's the natural outgrowth of this technology where you see these things in front of your eyes wherever you look? Yes, ad placement. And so I have here in the blog how it may actually look when you look in the store and little ads pop up, Google ads, and these are real Google ads they have in this video that pop up and say, see, look, 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 look at this. People getting distracted. Somebody had a Google Glass thing that they redid where the guy is looking and he's reading his thing on his eyes 
from the glasses and he runs into a pole and falls over. <laughs> I mean, it's going to take a whole new level of not being distracted by such craziness that pop up in front of your eyes. Plus, beaming things directly into your eyes. Is that good? Will they find that it fries your retinas? <laughs> Who knows? Strange things are afoot, like I'm saying earlier. And actually, <laughs> check this out. My tablet even went wonky on the video. You probably can't see it. Well, you definitely can't see it since it just went wonky again because I hit some buttons here. Anyway, the point is, it wouldn't even display the video, right? It was playing the music, but not the video. It was playing weird digital fuzziness. <sighs> it's just been one of those shows, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, this is why you tune in to watch the doctors so that you can see what strangeness happens on the show anyway. I know these things. So, I trust you enjoyed the show this week, such as it was. Remember, until next time, that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.